Hello and welcome to just outside of Munich, Germany and welcome to the Honda E. In this video we are taking it on our usual 70 mile per hour highway range test. I'm so excited to share this vehicle with you. I'm actually performing the DC fast charging test right now, charging it from zero to 100%, which is the perfect and most convenient test to do before we leave on the highway range test, the 70 mile per hour loop style test. I'm going to take you through a little walkthrough on the car. I'm going to tell you all about the testing procedures and then we're going to get it out on the Autobahn and not max it out in this video. That'll be another video. We're going to go 70 mile per hour constant until we end up here at 0% state of charge. This is the little Honda E. It's a European Japanese little city car that we unfortunately don't get in the US, but it has such a personality. To me, if you can't have an expensive car, a fast car, a car that goes on a lot of range, or I say if you're not going to go that way and you're gonna make more of an economy vehicle meant for inner city use, at least give it some personality. And that's exactly what this vehicle has. You can see we're at 82% state of charge right now, charging up to 100 at 20 kilowatts. Oh, it's gonna take a little while. But of course you have to remember this has a small battery pack and if you're looking at the results or looking for the results for the DC fast charging test head to my other channel out of spec reviews where you will see the results right there but for now let me show you the Honda E just a little quick tour you can see the handles really interesting you just pull them out like this gorgeous interior i'm doing this test pretty late at night it's almost 10 30 11 o'clock by the time we leave and that's just because the autobahn should be a little less busy now we are going to stick in the right lane during this test because there's a whole bunch of porsches mercedes audi bmw here with all the big engines we've seen rs6 wagons m5s gt3s 911 turbos and they're all going to be doing 250 to 300 kilometers an hour in the left lane so big speed disparity we'll make sure to stay out of everyone's way here but this is the inside of the honda e i just want to show you one very neat feature that's not really related to this charging test but it is just so neat. Take a look at this. Let me get this booted up here one second. First of all, it doesn't have side view mirrors. They're little, um, uh, they're the electronic ones, which are not allowed in the US and I'm still getting used to them. During the daytime, they're awesome. It means you don't have as much of a little thing sticking out the side of the car so you can fit down narrow streets, but on the highway, they're a little bit glary. But this, you know, has all of your information. This is your infotainment display, sort of the split screen. You can pull up your EV menu. You can set your charge limit. Honda recommends an 80% charge limit. Of course, we have it set to for 100% charge limit. Interestingly, you can also set your home and away, which is perfect. So at home every day, you can say, hey, don't charge past 80% at home. But when you're away, charge it up full. But this is the best feature, the aquarium. <laughs> you can have a fish tank going down the road in your Honda E, which is just so fun and weird and quirky. I absolutely love it. You can see the shifter down here. It's such a cool car and I'll have a full review again on this later on, but today we're just focusing on the range. So one of the reasons I do the DC fast charging test right before the range test, or at least I try to, I always DC charge a car before a range test, is it becomes possible for the car to select its battery pack and drivetrain temperature. This has a liquid cooled battery pack. It's cycling on and off the AC compressor to maintain its optimal pack basically whole temperature of the system. What this means is when we unplug, it's a little bit chilly. It's about 15 to 17 degrees Celsius out here. Uh, the car isn't going to have to warm up and we won't have mixed results. This also helps level out the results for range tests that we do in the winter and range tests that we do in the summer. If we can start at a nominal temperature for that vehicle, then we're good to go. Um, the Honda E tire pressures I just set at the manufacturer cold tire pressure ratings. So that's something I do as well. We're going to get on the highway, which is literally 150 meters behind me. It's right there. And we're gonna set the cruise control at 70 mile per hour constant. And the reason we do a loop style test is because we want to end up at the exact same position we started. The reason for this is for wind. If we have a tailwind on the way closer to Stuttgart, then we should have a headwind on the way back towards Munich. And then also for elevation. Munich's at pretty high elevation. I'm actually starting about 40 minutes northwest of the city at about 500 meter elevation. 
it's pretty much flat to Stuttgart and that's the reason we're starting outside of the Munich area. It's a little bit higher in elevation. So all of this goes into trying to make the most accurate as possible range test, but of course uh, weather factors, vehicle factors, aging, for example, of the battery pack. Nothing's ever going to be truly scientific. This particular car has about 8,300 kilometers of use on it. It's journalist driven. They're hard kilometers. So that's what, about 5,000, 5,500 miles on a small battery pack. That's quite a few cycles. I always try to find the freshest car I can for these range tests, but this should give us a pretty good idea. Also, one last note about the Honda E is it's about 35 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack gross size. I'm unaware of the usable capacity. We will maybe do some calculations. However, uh, this car excels in the city. When I was driving this around Munich for the day today, my estimated range was way more than I believe what even WLTP rates this vehicle. I'll have to go back and check the WLTP range rating. I'll put it right here. Boop. Uh, because this car is not rated by the EPA, so we don't know uh, the equivalent EPA rating like the rest of our range tests. Um, but at 70 miles per hour on the highway, it's going to chug through electricity pretty quickly. This is optimized for low speed. And part of that's shown in the drivetrain tuning as well. When you pull up to a red light in this thing and you're ready to go, it just gives you all the power in the world instantly. Uh, really fun to drive, of course. I'm so surprised with how quick and zippy and nimble and well-performing this car is. So once it hits 100% state of charge, we're going to unplug immediately. We'll actually warm up the cabin while it's connected to the charger a little bit. Uh, although will we, because that's doing the DC test? Probably not. Uh, we'll keep the climate control reasonable. We'll hit the highway and I'll film all that so you can join me on this test. And we have just completed at 100%. It actually showed 98%, so I plugged it back in. We stuffed another 200 watt hours in there and then it jumped to 100. Probably just a little BMS confusion, but at least we know we have absolutely everything in here. Here's type two, by the way, really interesting plug compared to the US. We don't have the little latch on top, so it's once it's done, you just pull it right out. Really interesting solution. Um, interestingly, during my charging test, I think it's worth noting, this car is claimed by the manufacturer to have a 35.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. However, in this test, I was only able to add about 29 kilowatt hours in it. So 35.5 kilowatt hours must be the gross capacity and there must be serious buffers top and bottom. Uh, I would guess so because even at the top, it was charging at four kilowatts all the way to the end. It dipped down to three for a half a second, which is showing me that we weren't eating every bit of the battery and at very low state of charge, sorry for the combustion vehicles, at very low state of charge, it still maintained good acceleration. So I think that 35.5 kilowatt hours is definitely gross. I can't find a usable capacity number anywhere, but this car is indicating just about 28 kilowatt hours usable um, because of course there's always going to be a little bit of losses while charging, but 29 were delivered to the vehicle. Anyway, it's full charge. Let's not delay. Let's jump on the road, reset the trip computers, and see how this thing does. Opening up. I love this interior. <laughs> the guys are ripping around on their dirt bikes. That's awesome. 100% state of charge. We have climate control off for right now, just as we get everything set, make sure we're all reset. Um, let's see. Current drive, boom, trip A, zero, zero, trip B. Let's reset that. We do that on this side. Trip B, reset, reset, all good. Car's estimating 149 kilometers to empty. It has a 222 mile WLTP range, which we all know is pretty unachievable. On this side, I have the power flow display. On this side, I have the trip computer. I don't know if I've shown you this, but you can make the whole thing into an aquarium if you'd like, which I think is just so cool. So we'll go this one there, power flow there. I love the split screen approach. Uh, oh wait, I just confused it. We want power flow on this side. There's that. And we want trip computer on this side. Boom. Perfect. So I'm going to use the fancy little shifters. We're going to get it up to speed and see how she does. Here we are pulling out of the parking lot. I found an extra setting for these digital mirrors that I'm going to try out. It's basically a wide view setting. And it took me a second to get used to these mirrors because I thought they weren't actually wide enough. So come on, BMW, you can do it. <laughs> Nicely done. And now we are going to head out onto the Autobahn, leaving the Ionity charging station. 79 cents, Euro cents per kilowatt hour is quite expensive. We're going to go towards Stuttgart here. 
Uh, we're gonna gently ease our way up to speed. 116 kilometers indicated here is 70 mile per hour constant. I've also set the climate control to 21 degrees Celsius, which is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's typically where we set these tests. Auto high beams are on, but I don't really want them to be. So gently merging up to speed here. Looks like we are good. We're gonna get it up to 116 kilometers per hour. Then I'm going to set the uh, adaptive cruise control and lane centering. Of course, there is no speed limit where we are, <laughs> as you can see, which is great, 116. So let's set, boom, let's put lane centering on. There we go, as I don't drive off the road. And we're just gonna sit here between 115, 116 kilometers per hour indicated is 70 mile per hour constant. You can see the electric side view mirrors. Everything here is just great. Again, we always run climate control on auto in our tests, and you can see if we did not run climate control, we would gain four kilometers. So we'll see how well we do. Energy consumption's high because we just merged onto the highway. We don't wanna get stuck behind anyone. No aero advantage or anything like this, so we'll be making passes. No more than 70 miles per hour, of course. Typical range test. I'll catch up with you around halfway. This thing is just so great. Best part about Germany is we're cruising along and <laughs> cars are just wide open. We are reaching our turnaround point right here. We're gonna get back on and head the other way. We have 65% state of charge, which means if it was perfectly flat, we would end up back with 30%. Although I feel like we went uphill a little bit heading this way, so it's possible. I'm just gonna pull the left paddle here for increased regen. Uh, it is possible that uh, we will end up with a little bit more state of charge, but the next exit on this road isn't for a very long time and I didn't wanna chance it, so the exits are a little bit closer together back where we started. And of course, we're gonna run it out to zero on B Road. So with a car with this small of a battery pack, um, let's think about the best way to get back on the highway is to go uh, left over and back on to the right, I think. So we'll make a left. Um, yeah, with a car this small battery pack, we may end up leaving the highway with uh, close to eight to 10% state of charge, just depends because we really don't have much highway range here. So that's just something we need to keep in mind and plan for. Other than that though, really enjoying this car. It's very quiet. It's very stylish. The steering is great. Um, <laughs> this might be one of my favorite cars. Oh, it's a left onto the highway here. Yeah, might, what, might be one of my all time favorite cars and putting the mirrors in the wide view has really solved my problems with them. Really starting to like them quite a bit just like this whole car. And the lights in Europe are pretty cool because they go red, then when they're about to turn, they go yellow like this and then green. So you can always get a little bit of a jump start. Gotta love it. Cool, well, uh, I'll check in with you back after uh, we start getting close to the end of this range test, but it's going well. Traffic is to a near minimum. And uh, it just means that this is gonna be a pretty accurate highway range test here for the Honda E. And we are now coming off of 70 miles an hour at our exit, 125.2 kilometers. We are at 6% state of charge. I don't believe we'd be able to make it up to our next exit. So we will be taking this one here, heading back over to the charger. And then from there, I think uh, we'll just run back roads at, uh, let's say 170 to 100 kph until it runs out at zero and call it a perfect range test. Really amazing conditions there. We have just hit low power turtle mode and uh, we're actually merging back onto the highway. I took back roads up to the next exit and now we're back on the highway. I was able to maintain 120 or sorry, 115 kilometers just fine on the back roads. And it looks like we will too. So maybe getting off the highway, you know, I always try to tell you how long this car does at 70 miles an hour. It's possible that uh, at least according to this test, we were able to get it right down to zero at 70 miles an hour. So I would say it's still rocking, still has life left in it. Although even though it says turtle mode, so we get off in one kilometer, there is where I think we'll call it. So uh, 800 meters, let's pull up our trip computer because for the most part, we've still been doing 
70. We're down to 2% state of charge. <laughs> Getting right up to the edge here. And uh, let's call it. So pulling it off, you know, 70 miles an hour, 132.1 kilometers. That's what we'll call it at. I'm going to run this sucker down to zero. Won't take me very long. And we'll plug it in here in a second. And our test is now complete, 0% state of charge. We got every last drop out of this thing, exactly 200 watt hours per kilometer and 136 kilometers at our 70 mile per hour highway range test. And there you have it, just about 88 miles on a charge here in the Honda E. I gotta say, that for the small battery city EV in the worst possible scenario, 70 miles per hour highway, is really not bad. When we look at our electric smart car test, which has a smaller battery pack, but also a competitor to this vehicle, that did 51 miles. I3 did somewhere in that 55 range, I believe, with the small battery pack. So this is great perfect size battery for city use. You can take it on a trip if you want to occasionally. It does have DC fast charging, but it's not really that fast. It does 46, 47 kilowatts, but then kind of sits in the 30s for the, you know, from like 20% on. So it's just a perfect city cruiser. If these were in the US, it might even be my daily driver. I might replace my electric smart car with this. It's just so quirky and fun and has a great personality. And I think the perfect amount of range for the job. It's not like if you had more range than this, you could almost like stretch taking it on a road trip and then you put yourself through all that torture. This is like strictly a, ci a city machine and it doesn't try to do anything it's not designed to do. I love that. So thanks so much for joining another Inside EVs highway range test here. I hope you enjoyed the uh, Honda E. And if you're looking for more videos on this car, please check out Out of Spec Reviews. I'll have plenty of other videos with this and all of the other EVs we're testing for the month we are here in Europe.